the icons of real estate podcast. Are you ready to learn the proven money-making secrets from top producing icon agents? Ready to skyrocket your business? This podcast is for you. Tune in every week with your host, Tomasz Fonseca, and find out how to implement proven strategies to 10 times your business. From $3 million to $30 million in just 12 months. Brought to you by the Masters in Real Estate Marketing, Arter SEO. Welcome to Icons of Real Estate Podcast. I'm your host, Patty Teal. Today's guest is Justin Stoddart. Gosh, you're going to really love what he has to tell us. He's not only a licensed real estate agent, he teaches the secrets of scaling a referral business without relying on friends or clients. That would really be nice. <laughs> he helps people to think bigger, to recognize the potential they have inside, and to be inspired to live in pursuit of that potential. Prepare to be inspired. Welcome, Justin. Thanks, Patty. So good to be here with you. Thank you for the opportunity. Oh, it's so great to have you here. So I thought we'd start, as we usually do on this show, with you sharing your journey, how you got to the point that you're at now. So start as young as you like and what, what <laughs> helped you to end up where you are today. I love it. So my parents were both very entrepreneurial, only high school educated, but they realized that they wanted to provide a better life than uh, maybe just the typical nine to five would produce. Mm -hmm. And so uh, again, with, with nothing more than a high school education and a lot of grit, I watched both of them struggle to then build amazing businesses. And, and their oh. stories are both deeply very inspiring to me. Uh, I knew from a very early age that I wa also wanted to be in business for myself. And uh, the early 2000s, um, I was involved in some, some home flipping. And then I got into the home building business, specifically focusing on land development and luxury custom construction. So I did that until 2008, nine, when the market really crashed. I had a, a tough decision at that point. It actually wasn't tough, but it seemed as if it would have been tough because the market had been good. I'd built a good business. Um, and you would think that at that point, it would be painful for me to say, I got to either like grit my teeth and get through this, or I've got to walk away from it. And for me, it was an easy walk away because I didn't love developing land. I didn't love building homes. It was okay but it mm -hmm. wasn't my life's passion. And so I set out to find out what that was, realized my passion was not developing land, it was developing people. It wasn't building homes, it was building businesses. And so ever since then, I've been solely focused on that. How do I build a career that allows me to develop people, help them to, again, recognize the potential inside of them and live in pursuit of that. And then also to build a business that allows that to be manifest, to really impact people for good. So that's what I get to do now full-time. I have a, a coaching business that really focuses on uh, kind of some unique methodologies to get people to those realities of who they are and what they can build. That's wonderful. I love when people are living their passion. That's so important. Do you know how it, you discovered it or you just knew that wasn't right and you tried this and you knew immediately that was what you wanted to do? You know, I think for anybody that's looking for that, it, it absolutely did not come in a very clear dream in the middle of the night and I woke up and knew what it was. It was more of like, I bumped my head here. I, okay, it's not there. I bumped my head over here, but I would get little glimpses. And again, I was looking for it. I think that's important. If, yeah. if we're not happy with what we're mm -hmm. doing, or maybe we're happy with what we're doing, we're not happy with the methodology by which we're creating that thing. For example, I know a lot of real estate agents who, who are, are, they know they want to be a real estate agent, but the way that they've been taught to do it doesn't align with their DNA. Like it doesn't actually fire them up to say, this is what I get to go do. It's kind of like, this is what I have to do mm -hmm. to build a business. But if I didn't have to do it that way, I wouldn't, but they don't see another pathway forward. So sometimes finding it isn't just your life's work, but it's how you want to do your life's work. So it's, it's kind of twofold. And I, I found it because I was actively looking for it. I was actively mm -hmm. looking to find a career that was very much aligned with the impact that I wanted to have upon other people and upon the community. And so I, I think we have to be looking for it. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to take every little clue that we find of like, that gave me more energy, even though it was an activity and it took work. I, I left that conversation. I left that scenario feeling more on fire than before I went into it. Uh, and I think that's, that can be a good clue of like, Ooh, that was, that lit me up. That was good. Right. And, uh, and then little by little, we start to piece together these clues and find a place in an industry where, where we really get to do that, where we get to be in our area of brilliance, right? We talk about that, but I think the area of brilliance is, is you know, nothing more than it's an alignment with some natural gifts that we have 
and uh, allows us to really live uh, where we can contribute the most. And uh, again, I, th I think that comes little by little, kind of uh, line upon line, a uh, little bit by little bit, here a little bit, there a little bit, and you start to piece it together. And eventually, if you keep looking for it, I think you'll find it. Wow, you're very wise. So that upstream model, you have a book called Think Upstream Model, or is it The Upstream Model? That's right, the yep, upstream The Upstream Model. model. Yep. Yes. So explain what that means, that upstream model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So often when you think upstream, it sounds like, well, that sounds hard. I want to go downstream. Right? That's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of the, like the knee-jerk reaction that many people mm -hmm. have. But if you look at people who have really built a great business, mm -hmm. they did it in a unique way. They didn't necessarily go and compete where everybody else was competing. Mm -hmm. So here's the metaphor that I use to, to demonstrate this. I was a high-end home builder. Mm -hmm. I had just separated from my previous employer and was out on my own now building my own custom home business. Mm -hmm. I knew how to build a good home. I, I had great suppliers, subcontractors. I knew how to keep clients happy. I assumed that it would be just as easy to go get new clients as my former employer had made it appear. He made it look really oh. effortless. I just assumed, okay, this will be great. I'll just let everybody know I'm in business now. Mm -hmm. But I realized that there was a whole separate business of getting the business so that then you could do the business, right? And I think probably every real estate agent can relate to that of like, hey, I'm licensed and I'm actually good at what I do. Hello, hello, anybody, anybody? Not only real estate agents, but I think everybody in business can yeah. relate to that. <laughs> yeah, 100%. So mm -hmm. what, what came about for me at that point is like, okay, there's what I'm being taught is to go cultivate a massive database of people, whether it be, mm -hmm. again, and comparing this to the typical real estate agent, right? It could be your sphere. It mm -hmm. could be a geographic farm. It could be, um, uh, you know, a, a whole bunch of internet leads, whatever it may be. The, we're, we're taught the same methodology, the same model, which is it's just simply a numbers game, mm -hmm. right? Just get a big list of people and 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 sort through that list and you'll find the people. And and I, I do not argue that that works. Mm -hmm. I also argue that there may be a better way. And here's, here's the alternative way that I would encourage everybody that's listening to this to think about this. I can't wait to hear. <laughs> <laughs> what if rather than, in fact, I'll use some numbers. Okay. Um, the statistics in real estate say that a database well cultivated, okay? In other words, nurtured, cultivated, you're, you're, you're doing all the things that you should be doing. To, to, to make your sphere love you, remember you, and want to use you in real estate. Mm -hmm. On average, that database converts at about 10% a year. In other words, if you had 100 people in your database, mm -hmm. you could expect to close about 10 deals, some of them directly from the database, others referred from your database. Okay. okay. So in other words, to add 10 deals to your business, you need to go add 100 relationships. Mm -hmm. sure, a lot of relationships, right? right? So the methodology that I teach is, there are other professionals in our marketplace from other industries, but they're neighboring industries who already have relationships with their clients. Right. And as we find those professionals who in the course of their everyday work are already in consultative conversations with their clients and because of what they do for a living, mm -hmm. they're uncovering the fact that their clients are going to need a real estate agent next. If we recognize who those professionals are and follow a very strategic approach, we can begin to get warm referrals, not only quickly, but frequently and recurring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I learned this again as a home builder. I had a big database of people, but most of them were my age, which was at the time around 25 years old. Not many mm -hmm. of them were building nor referring million dollar home clients. Sure. I did recognize, however, that there was a professional in a neighboring industry, which happened to be the architectural industry. So an architect, mm -hmm. they were designing homes that then would need to be built. And I realized that that architect had the potential to refer me, not maybe once or twice a year, like the typical person in the average database, but they could refer me weekly. And I thought to myself, what can I do to get that architect to want to refer me? And I, mm -hmm. I again, hit my head against the wall multiple times trying to do it in a way that I'd been taught to treat my database saying, oh, by the way, I'm never too busy for, for your referrals. That maybe works when we have people who know us, like us, and trust us. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work when it's a business professional. Mm -hmm. Nor does it necessarily work for us to go spend a year trying to gain the trust of, let's say, an architect as a home builder, right? Mm -hmm. Or as a probate attorney or a lender or a, um, a financial advisor as a real estate agent, right? Trying to go court those professionals 
who in the course of their day-to-day -day work on covering that their clients are going to need a real estate agent next. It just doesn't make a lot of sense for us to go spend a year trying to, to, to get them to know us, like us, and trust us. And so I've developed a more simple model that allows us to step into the life of that upstream professional. So they're upstream from the real estate transaction, hence the name. Mm -hmm. And they are, because of where they're situated, where they're positioned in the marketplace and already have trust with their clients and their clients are going to need us next, then we have the ability at that point to be introduced to all of their clients. And it the, there's some simple steps that we take that defies the logic of what most how most real estate agents approach those. Because let's be honest, there's no shortage of people who say like, boy, it'd be really great to have an attorney referring me all the time. Mm -hmm. Or um, no doubt that it would, um, th there's no shortage of people saying, oh, it would be great to have a financial advisor or a CPA or an insurance agent referring me all the time, right? There's lots of people who, lots of agents who recognize that'd be a great referral relationship. They just don't know how to create one in a hurry. And most mm -hmm. times it's because they just get a couple of things wrong in the way that they approach and, and, and court that particular professional, which keeps them from really unlocking the power of that referral relationship and making it to where, going back to the numbers, mm -hmm. instead of having to court 100 people to get 10 new deals, they could legitimately court one person to get sure. 10 more deals. Sure, right? that makes one perfect person. sense. Yeah. So, so it allows them to, to, to get the same amount of referrals with far less resources expended um, and, and, and really be able to, to have even a better quality client because they can referred um, from uh, someone who already had deep trust with them on a business level. Mm -hmm. So you develop the relationship with these other professionals that are in, I don't know, parallel businesses that we could call them, yeah. but they're not the same as what you're doing. That's right. That's right. And then does it go back and forth? You you also refer them so that it's kind of reciprocal? There's definitely value going both ways. But one of the big myths, Patty, is that people think that like, okay, if I'm going to get business from a probate attorney, I better have clients that are going to need a probate attorney. They give me a referral, I give them a referral. And so there becomes this almost immediate breakdown of like, how many, how many possible referrals can I send their way? probably maybe one a year. I don't know if it's worth my time to go court a probate attorney if I'm going to get one in return a year. Mm -hmm. But the reality is many of these professionals don't need more clients. Most financial advisors or CPAs that I talk to, they're like, I'm pretty good. I've got a good book of, book of business. I'm really looking to expand the value that I offer uh -huh. and cross sell to more uh -huh. of my existing clients uh -huh. and or pr provide a, a higher level client experience uh -huh. that keeps them more loyal and kind of refers in, you know, internally to their you know, people that are like them. And so oftentimes it's not a matter of you give me a referral, I'll give you a referral, like many people think. And that's what mm -hmm. slows it down. Okay. It's, it is finding a way, however, to deliver value to their client experience to where you come up in conversations regularly. Right. So is this what you talk about in the book that you wrote? It is. I do. Mm -hmm. I, I cover at a high level, the overall principles that allow a professional to go from common provider to uncommon provider. Mm -hmm. Part of it is how they're introduced and by whom they're introduced, right? If you, for example, if, if I find a real estate agent on the internet mm -hmm. and they don't respond in five minutes, I'll, I'll go find another one on the internet, right? right? Whereas if my financial advisor says and edifies, this is who I recommend you talk to, or here's somebody at least you should talk to, I probably don't need to respond in five minutes and they're probably not going to go mm -hmm. replace me in five minutes. They'll wait till I return their call as long as it's a reasonable amount of time, right? Um, and so you get a better quality client that already trusts you more coming in. So yes, I, I teach those principles. And then I have additional resources inside of a private Facebook group in which I, I walk people through specifically kind of the more tactical um, pieces of how to do that with, with professionals that are, that are parallel to, you know, using your words, um, to the real estate industry. Oh, that's fascinating. It makes perfect sense too. Really just perfect sense. So when you do offer coaching, um, I know you said that you have the private Facebook groups uh, with the coaching. Is it one-on-one? -on -one? Is it groups? Can you describe the model of your coaching services? Yeah, no, I love the assist. Yes, um, it's, it's actually different than coaching. I actually call, I call it something different. I call it coaching plus. Ah, um, mm -hmm. So I believe that there's no shortage of good ideas. They're everywhere, right? We're, we're, <laughs> yeah. we're just swamped with good ideas. But you and I both know that good ideas don't make us any money, mm -hmm. only good ideas implemented. And so what we've done with our offer is we've actually hired implementers. Like, for example, uh, people who are very proficient at, at real estate operations, even those that have ran real estate operation teams, 
And when you work with us in our Coaching Plus program, you get uh, both group collaboration calls with other agents from around the country. Um, you also get individual one-on-one -on -one time with me in meetings like this, like a Zoom call, as well as uh, kind of walkie-talkie ongoing access where we can be in communication as needed. But you also get access to my team. That as we teach these systems, my team steps in and works directly with our clients to install these systems in their business. So it's not like, here's here's what you should do. Next week, I'll hold you accountable. Did you do it? It's no, we're going to get on a call and we're going to do it together. It's like the difference between calling Apple support mm -hmm. versus walking into an Apple store and stepping up to the genius bar and having yeah. that person grab your phone and help to help you do it, do it with you. That's what we believe the real estate industry needs. And so that's what, that's what our, our, our program offers is very much a hands-on done with you scenario. Oh, that sounds wonderful. That way you make sure it gets done. Precisely. <laughs> Precisely. If yeah. I'm going to put my name on it, I want to be sure it gets done, right? And I just uh -huh. know how much agents already have to do. Just because I give them a good idea doesn't mean it's going to get done. So yeah. if you're going to work with us. We're going to help you do it to be sure that it gets done to be sure you get the results. So, yeah. so and, and in that way, we can offer guarantees, you know, that others might not feel comfortable with, but it's uh -huh. good. We, we have some more influence over sense. that because we're working right. with them. Did it take you a long time to put the system together? I mean, it sounds like you're really well thought out, you know, as far as helping people to really make the progress that you're hoping they'll make. You know, um, I don't know if it's been a lot of time in kind of iterating, but I've been a student of this kind of my whole life. I've been mm -hmm. coach ever since the early 2000s when I you know, had my own home building business. I've been a student of professional development. And I just had to look back to say, who are the ones that moved the, ne the needle the most for me? Who are the ones that really impacted me in the biggest way? And um, because I've had many coaches and many of them um, have been good, but I can't say that I that it actually moved the needle in my business. They actually helped me to break through to another level. So I went back and did some reverse engineering to say, okay, well, what, who, who are those that really did make an impact and, and what made it work so well? Mm -hmm. And uh, then began to pattern what we do after kind of bits and pieces that we pulled from other, other programs that had really most impacted me. And it's, uh, that's been really helpful uh, to, to again, create something uh, that is unique and different. Mm -hmm. um, but but that's that's designed around kind of the science of, of what's helped me to grow. And we're constantly monitoring that. Like mm -hmm. just this past week, we added in a new layer of support to our clients because we felt like there was something still missing. So it's it's never work done. It's always a work in progress. And the and our our focus is always on what's getting our our clients results the fastest. Mm -hmm. Well, I love the fact that you are so hands on and that people get access to you. And not only that, but that you work with them. You don't just say, go do it and uh, expect it to get done. You really, really um, help them to accomplish their goals. You said on your web website, um, you had a, a beautiful saying, if I can find it again, um, maybe it was on the front of your website. Uh, it was like serving. Do you know what I'm talking oh, about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we, one of the things that we do with our clients is the very first step. We help them create what's called the think bigger blueprint, right? Mm -hmm. Think bigger is our brand. Hence, that's kind of what's right on my shoulder here. This TV is a constant reminder to think bigger. Um, and as we, as we begin working with agents, we really wanted to help them to not just create a successful business, mm -hmm. but to also create a significant life, um, to have something that, that was bigger than them, bigger than their business, bigger than their revenue, bigger than their profits, and, and, and frankly, people who, who aren't interested in, in creating significance, maybe just aren't our people. It doesn't mean that they're bad. It doesn't mean that we're better. It doesn't mean it sure. just means the fact that we actually want to work on people that are, that are kind of purpose driven, mm -hmm. that have, have kind of significance in mind, whatever that means for them. Like there, there's no um, specifics as your purpose should look like this, right? Mm -hmm. It's really helping us uncover what their unique purpose should be. And one of the things that, that, that we uncovered is, is we really kind of worked very specific, specifically with hundreds of agents on this process is one thing that everybody wanted was to live abundantly, to give abundantly, and to serve abundantly. Yeah, that's the beautiful thing that I misplaced for a moment, but I just love that. Yeah. I, I, th I think all of us um, would love to live a life that we, we never had to run anything through a money filter, right? Mm -hmm, Where it was like, mm -hmm. or it's just no, I want to live a great life and let's go do right. this. Okay, great. Let's do it. I also think that all of us would love to write bigger checks to charities that we care about. Sure. Yeah. And I think we probably all would love to even give more time, right? Where we mm -hmm. serve abundantly to those causes that really light us up. So, so that really becomes kind of the foundation of what it means to think bigger 
is to help people to have success and significance, which means to live, give, and serve abundantly. That's a beautiful tagline. It's just lovely. And you also have a Think Bigger real estate show. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah, you bet. I've got a, a podcast. I was just notified that I'm five years in, which I think Hello. I was... Uh, I was, I was podcasting before podcasting was, was cool, which for me, it, it was really a strategy. I was in the title and escrow industry for a time, and it really was a way for me to connect with agents who I couldn't connect with otherwise, mm-hmm. or top agents who I wanted to attract their business, attract the business for our company. And I knew that if I just cold called them, it probably, I, I didn't have any value to offer them until I really understood what they wanted. And that was difficult to get their attention for a discovery call, right? Discovery process. So I, I, realize what if I were to build a podcast and invite them to come on, I'll interview them. And all mm-hmm. of a sudden I had an equal value exchange. People were accepting that invitation. And uh, so it started off as, as something kind of very um, self, self-serving in that degree, right? It was, it was a strategic sure. way to acquire mm-hmm. a new business title industry. And then quickly what I realized is like, I love this. I love <laughs> learning from people uh-huh. and just being able to spend time with them mm-hmm. uh, and, 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 and be able to, to really, uh, reach out to to people who have who've done great things and have them hopefully rub off on me just a little bit. And uh, so now uh, close to, I think we're 300, almost 330 episodes in. And uh, you have just learned, learned so much from so many great people. So yeah, my, my podcast is, uh, we, we have a weekly interview and then mm-hmm. I do also like a weekly um, kind of monologue training where I go mm-hmm. deep on a specific topic, kind of curating the best ideas that I'm finding in real estate. Well, that's very cool. Well, we have that in common. I really love talking to people like you. And, you know, I find it so inspirational. And I'm just realizing how many, well, all ages, but there's so many young people that have done so much in their young lives. I'm just kind of blown away. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, very cool. So um, if somebody was interested in your coaching, how would they find you? Yeah, so I think just going to my website, there's a a quick little um, kind of intake form. It's called... uh, so the website is think bigger re like think bigger real estate think bigger and mm-hmm. then forward slash get our help and it's just okay. like a seven question survey it just helps us kind of understand where they're at in their business and we are a zero pressure group like we're going to share who we are we want to learn who you who you are and let's see if there's a fit if there's alignment and let's talk about the details of that but i'm um, really we're looking for people that are on a similar um, kind of uh, uh, path as we are and if we can help them great and if i feel like hey look i don't think what you're looking for is what we offer then at that point, we just either have referral partners who we refer them to, uh, but it's just a very easy, friendly conversation kind of outlining how we help people. And sometimes it's a fit, sometimes it's not. We're totally okay with That's exactly what we're interested in, actually. I totally understand. Well, uh, I can't thank you enough for being on Icons of Real Estate today. You were just a true gem. I really appreciate oh, you, the Patty. wisdom that you shared. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Bye. Bye.